Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pat's Southern Kitchen. Now, we have a chilly winter day here in North Texas, but the sun is shining and we are headed toward New Year's. Now, we have cooked and eaten our way through Thanksgiving, Christmas, and my goodness, what are we gonna do for New Year's? Well, you know, it is a Southern tradition to have black-eyed peas in some form or another. So this morning, I decided that we needed a big pot of Hoppin' John black-eyed pea stew. That's sort of what I call it because it's got wonderful things added to it. Now, yesterday I went on the great black-eyed pea search and Here's what I came up with, and it's most likely what you will find uh, as you prepare for black-eyed peas on New Year's Day. So, the, one of the options you can use, of course, is our old standby dried black-eyed peas. And you would fix um, approximately four cups. You would have um, already um, um, soaked black-eyed peas. So you're going to soak these for six hours in cool water and come up with the equivalent of four cups. Now, or you could, like I did, <laughs> you might have a package of frozen fresh ones that uh, I got at the farmer's market this summer and I froze several packages. So if you're lucky, you might have that. Uh, but I kept looking and looking, and I came up with, at Trader Joe's, I came up with steamed black-eyed peas. Well, that doesn't really fit the bill because you're gonna cook these, but I've got a purpose for these a little later. And then what I finally found, let me cut my butter off here. What I finally found was the dried black-eyed peas that had already been soaked and were ready for use. So, I've chosen to use those today. Now, let's go right over here and uh, to, the, to our cutting board, and I'm gonna introduce you to the cast of characters, like I always say. So, what's in this is um, one chopped onion, it has, I've thrown in a little bit more than half of a green bell pepper. Oh, so sweet and wonderful. And of course, for color, you have to have a beautiful red bell pepper. So I put that in. Three or four stalks of chopped celery, which adds a wonderful texture to all of this. And then to taste, I've added, um, let's see here, seasoning salt. I added black pepper, I'm going to. Um, garlic that I've already chopped up. There's about four cloves of that. And then um, this wonderful seasoning salute from Trader Joe's. So a little bit of all of that, and it all comes down to your personal taste of how you want it seasoned. And of course, You've got to have, I did a spiral cut ham um, several days ago, and the big shank that was left, I cut a big piece off, and this will go in for flavoring, and that's very important. And then, of course, our four cups of already soaked black-eyed peas. We've got that, and we will put it in, um, chicken broth, and I did my own chicken broth up, and there's five cups of that. So the first thing we're gonna, and a little bit of butter, because the first thing we're going to do is to uh, take four tablespoons of butter, and we're gonna put it, melt it, and then we're gonna add all of these wonderful veggies that we just cut up. So I'll cook those, I'll go this direction, and add the bell pepper. Isn't that pretty? Oh my goodness. And this whole onion. There we go. 
And I'm going to put in this um, cloves of garlic. Let me see if I let any time out. I think at this point, I think I will save my seasonings until we have sauteed this for three or four minutes. So I'm going to do this and we'll check right back with you. Okay, we have sauteed our beautiful vegetables and I went ahead and put them in a bowl and uh, three or four minutes just to your liking. So we're gonna put them in our big pot here to begin that stew. So that goes in first. And then I am going to put, uh, let's put our peas next. I think four cups, remember? So I'm gonna put all of that in there. That'll work. Now, I'm going to add at this point, um, chicken broth. Now, I'm gonna turn around back here because I put it in the corner. So this is four cups of my own chicken broth I did from a roasted chicken. Got that. And I'm gonna add one more cup. This is two cups. So that, that ought to be about right. There we go. Now, then let's add our um, ham. Now this is what's gonna give it that wonderful seasoned flavor. So we're gonna put a big chunk of that right in the middle. Now if you don't want to use ham, um, you could use bacon, you could use um, ham slices. Um, you might even want to put in, instead of ham, if you don't care for ham, you might put in a smoked turkey leg or something like that, something that you may have left over from Christmas and frozen, but something that would give it a good flavor. So whatever your preference is, is what you need to do. Now, let's add some seasoning. Now this is garlic salt. There's about a tablespoon teaspoon in there. What I'm going to do is test it as I go. Now here's about a teaspoon of sea salt. So I'm going to put that in. That never hurt anything. And then the uh, seasoning salute. Um, there's a tablespoon. I'm not going to put all that. I'll put a little bit. There we go. And pepper. Uh, fresh ground pepper. So let's, I'm, I'm a little afraid to put too much. So I'm, you know, teaspoon, something like that. And then I think that is what we're gonna add at this point. Now, one thing you might choose to do is add diced, um, diced tomatoes. Now, I have the little petite diced tomatoes. This is a whole can. I'm not gonna add a whole can. You might choose to use something like Rotel, which is your chilies and um, jalapeno. It gives you a good bite. But if your family doesn't like jalapenos and that, don't put that just, but for color and whatnot, uh, I'm gonna add a little bit of this. I'm not gonna overdo it. And then I can add more. But if you will look closely, it makes a really pretty stew. So what we're gonna do now is to cook this about 30 minutes. And we're gonna check back and see what we think. And then I'll tell you what we're gonna put it over. All right, our Hoppin' John Black Eyed Pea Stew is cooking on the stove. And I'm letting it simmer away and we will check it in a minute. But I wanted to share with you one of the most important and historical southern uh, delicacy. Now, you may have grown up where your parents or your grandparents um, had mustard greens, turnip greens, and collard greens. Let me show you. I have a good mixture here of all of those. Aren't they beautiful? They're dark green and they're full of chlorophyll, which are high in nutrients and vitamins. And it's something that is 
um, just as valuable as the new kale everyone eats. But let me show you. I did a shortcut, and I went to Trader Joe's, and I got a couple of sacks of these cooking greens. And so instead of doing just collard greens, this is a mixture of turnip greens, mustard greens, and spinach, and collard greens. And that's what you see here. And the best part is, also, I didn't have to wash and wash and wash and clean and de-stem everything. So you might consider doing that, but it is a very important part of the Southern culture. And it, it is, it's called a green because it's in the, in the cabbage family, but it doesn't head like a cabbage. And it goes with um, black-eyed peas famously. So we're going to do that today. Now, let's proceed over here and I will show you. Let's see, we're going to take, I'll take the collard greens back over here. And this is a very simple recipe. And the first thing we're going to do is to take about a half cup of the chopped onions again. And I'm going to put them right here. Excuse, excuse my noise. And I'm going to put a tablespoon and you ask how I know that's a tablespoon I've been doing it a long time so I'm going to assume that is we're going to heat this up and we're going to saute these onions after that olive oil sort of cooks there let me get my wooden spoon so we saute the onions then we're going to add um, garlic chopped up garlic cloves about a tablespoon and that adds up to about two garlic cloves so we're going to let this saute a minute and we'll just keep it on here while we while we're talking now let's see so i'm going to add the um garlic that's two two cloves and it's going to begun to really smell like garlic. I bet you smell it from there, can't you? And then we're going to add, put that right there, some um, red pepper flakes, just a touch. And if you don't want a lot, don't add a lot. But that'll give it a nice, that's about a teaspoon, a half a teaspoon, something like that. So we're going to start out with that and then the next thing we will do is to get our big pot and put our chicken broth in it so we will put five cups of chicken broth in a big pot so i'm going to go get my pot and i'll check back with you in a second all right, we have sauteed our onions now and our red pepper flakes and our garlic. <clears throat> Not that much of them, so I've got a, uh, I'm going to put them right here in the big pot and we're going to finish this off. This is a simple recipe. Now, some people like a lot more onions, so if you want to add more onion, add another half, half cup of onion. So make it a whole cup if you choose. So we're going to put this pot now on the stove, and here is, I'm going to say four cups, here we go, of our chicken broth. See, we've used lots of chicken broth today. All right, that's enough, I think, four cups. Now, this recipe will serve about four people. Now, that looks like a lot but it's going to cook down. As you know, if you've ever cooked spinach and turnip greens, that all just sort of cooks down. So, um, But you have to start out with a pretty big pot. So put these beautiful greens in here. And um, you're going to cook this about an hour. So let me get it all in there. Wow, I've got a whole pot, but these will really cook down. Okay, we got it all in there. Let me put this down. Now, we come to 
the flavor that you might like in this. And um, if you choose um, bacon, if you fry bacon and take the bacon um, fat and put the bacon in it, that's a good choice. If you like the smoked turkey leg or the something of that nature, that's also a good choice if you're not into ham. But since I happen to have, where did I put that? Here it is. Since I happen to have the spiral cut ham, uh, I took this off of the off of the shank, and so it's a nice big piece. So it's really going to flavor. So I'm going to put this down sort of in it, and with that, see that's sort of what it looks like. With that, we're going to let it. We're going to put the lid on it, and we're going to cook it uh, a while. And the point is, is to get the. It's called pot liquor, and pot liquor is that wonderful um, liquid that will cook down in this. So you'll want to keep some of that, but we're going to cook it a while. Okay. All right, we're back again, and that Hop and John Black Eyed Peas are ready to put in the bowl. And I wanted you to see them straight out of the pot. The collard greens, the mustard greens, and the turnip greens, um, I'm getting ready to take out two. And I will talk about those in a minute. But let's get to this big pot. Isn't that beautiful? Um, of Hoppin' John Black Eyed Peas. Now, I, I went ahead and shredded up the ham in there so that everybody could have a piece of ham. Now. I alluded a while ago to the fact that this was just Southern good luck. Now, it goes back, uh, the legend says that it's good luck because it's, it's because of a horticultural reason. They're also called cow peas, and the farmers plant them, and they put nitrogen back into the soil and that means that the next crop will be very healthy and full of soil nutrients so they say that if you eat a black eyed pea for every day you'll have luck for every pea you eat so i think that's a good reason to put this on your table now i've left a good bit of soup and I call this pot liquor too. So you will want to put it, here we go. Isn't that pretty? Now, one of the ways that a lot of people enjoy is to either fix a big bowl with rice on the bottom and pour this on top, uh, keeping back some of it. Or if you wanna just see how it is individually, um, you can take a little bit of rice, put it in the bottom, now, I cooked this rice with um, chicken broth, and that's why it's sort of golden yellow. But if you want to do it about that much, and then you take your peas, and everybody gets a helping of peas. And if you want more broth, you're going to use the other spoon that doesn't have slots in it. But... And you give everybody a little piece of ham or two. And your peas are ready. So we've got that. I'm going to put it here. Now, we're also going to do a big bowl of collard mustard and turnip and spinach greens. So let's see what that looked like. All right, I started it here. Now, because they shrink, they just diminish a great deal, I went ahead and put an extra package that I was showing you a while ago because they really do um, diminish here. So I'm going to get them out. I added a little bit more seasoning and I did not cook them an hour. I cooked them more like 30 minutes. And if you'll notice, they still have body. 
um, they're not cooked way down. And the reason for that is, in my experience, is that you keep more nutrients in it when you don't cook and cook and cook the nutrients out. So I believe in keeping as much as possible of the vitamins and minerals and good things that make it good for us. Now, I didn't put the ham in there, and I haven't put pot liquor yet. Let me, let me just borrow this from over here, and we'll put a little bit of pot liquor in it. And this is very tasty. So, the only thing that is missing here now is cornbread. And we will talk about that another day, except that if you have looked at my cornbread dressing, you remember that that's what I started out with. And I still enjoy that. And if you don't want the jalapenos in them, don't put them in it. Put just what you want. But this is a wonderful start on New Year's Day. So I hope you enjoy and I hope you see lots of ball games and enjoy family. But be sure and try this. It's really good. Bless you.